Dude, pump yourself up because you are actually being like a real oh. downer, man. You're a fucking depressing motherfucker. I'm telling you, man. Like, I'm almost... You're doing better to... Fuck, bro! Like I'm, I'm, I'm almost like uh, close to asking you not to come for a fucking week before this fucking thing is over, man. And then I want you to go and have like three or four or fucking ten drinks, and then I want to see you. You know, nine days left. I go to Spain, and then I will come as a new person. Damn, fuck me, man. new and the same old Ignace. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see that fucking vodka pouring trick you always do, man. Like, fuck. Dude, and your fucking face is not there anymore. It's yeah. like, do I look slimmer or what? Dude, you look like a fucking ghost. <laughs> you look like the <laughs> ghost. <laughs> you look like the ghost of Ignace, man. That, that's what it would look like. My soul went out because Dude. she was used to drink. It's not a soul. It's a fucking spirit. And you've been fucking missing it for a long time. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Fuck. No fluff, no bullshit. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, dude, even your hello is fucking down. Like, hello. What the fuck, bro? Like, get some energy okay. in there, man. There we go. For one minute. Yeah. Say bro. hello. How are you guys doing? Like, All right. do like a, a real fucking thing. Come on. Sorry, guys. Ignis has not been drinking for about... 60 days now so uh yeah he's uh a little bit down he's fucking getting me down man like shit <laughs> anyway okay hello guys i'm still here. by the way even I'm today dead from inside he's he's fucking dead <laughs> on the inside guys i'm telling you today we are going to have a coke story and what uh coke? it's oh, not the kind of coke that you guys are thinking about it's about coca-cola all right Ignas, I wish I had a fucking line for you, bro. I mean, I, I really do. Dude, I really... Damn, boy. Hey, anyway. Give me one. We, on 75 Hard, you can do one, so... All right, get him a line, <laughs> Jonas. All right, so, anyway. Uh, a Coke story or a Coca-Cola story might not be very interesting for many people, especially if they uh, came up or like were uh, raised in the West where ever Coca-Cola was like a, an everyday thing. But for me being raised in Bulgaria, and I'm sure for Ignaz being raised in Lithuania, <laughs> uh, it was that a thing. That was a thing, yeah. Was it a thing in Lithuania? Yeah, sure. Dude, it was a... F anyway, let's, let's get to the story, all right? So first of all, let me tell you about like growing up in a fucking communist country. I know a lot of uh, a lot of the American elite now is swinging towards uh, socialism and all those ideas dressed up and, and bundled up in a in a really pretty suit. But let me tell you, communism is the worst thing that can happen to a country. All right. Communism. Not for my granddad. Sorry? Not for yeah, not granddad. for your granddad, not for my granddad yeah, because they were like, brainwashed, oh, man. Like, yeah, they're like they're yeah. like coming from fucking yeah. northern Korea, man. Like all of these guys fucking seem to love it. But anyway, what does communism actually mean? Let me try to summarize that a little bit. First of all, it means no freedom of speech. Zero. If you say a bad word about the people that are actually uh, running the country, you get sent out to a concentration camp where, let's just say, it's not as fun as the camps that you guys used to go to whenever you were Boy Scouts <laughs> and shit, you know? It's not as fun. So that's the one thing. The second thing I would say, like private property, or actually not private property, but uh, private businesses were forbidden. Everything yeah. is ran by the goddamn country. Everything from the manufacturers of milk, butter, bread, soft yeah. drinks, wherever it fucking is, it's all ran by the government. There is no private companies. There's nothing like that. You couldn't, you couldn't even sell matches because that would be considered a business which goes against the communist ideas. And so, you go again where? 
Oh yeah, it's it's you, you, you try selling some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, you going back to camp, and you know, but it's not that camp that you guys no, are thinking maybe, about. Uh, there's no kumbaya probably. songs there, yeah. man. There's no guitars. <laughs> there's no bonfires. There's no marshmallows at these camps, guys. It's like it's one-way like, ticket. It's a <laughs> one-way <laughs> ticket to a very bad place. Uh, another thing that I can say is like the scarcity because there's no competition, so private businesses actually build up competition and competition leads to actual manufacturers thinking up of better ways and better ways to upgrade their products and their offers towards the customers and whenever you don't have competition there's nothing to fucking worry about you got one car which is called a Moskvich or a fucking Lada and that's it. You don't need to worry about this. This car is shit. But there's no other fucking yeah. people on the market. So the only two cars that you can get is Lada or Moskvich. Google this shit. Trust me. You haven't seen anything like it. So that goes on for just about every industry, though, as well. Like everywhere else. There's like, I mean, in the the, the toy markets or like the the you know the places where they sold toys which were like two places in a whole city of sofia yeah. you had like a choice of five toys for boys and three toys for girls so like everybody in my neighborhood ended up we we actually had the same motherfucking toys i remember we had this truck that lifts like the the back of it mm. you know like a, a a plastic truck this was one of the toys we had this ugly ass looking clown which was freaky as fuck i don't think how the fuck did people buy that for their kids i still don't know i i, I got no idea that those There's clowns no i still see them and they still fucking scare me and oh yeah you had this uh like a plastic uh, sort of gun that shoots out a ping pong ball i don't know if you had didn't, that didn't see oh that. my god dude so basically that was it so in terms of everything there was no competition everybody like the government is manufacturing everything including what you eat and not enough of it that's the other thing yeah. because if, if yeah everything. dude like do you guys understand that we had to wait for 20 fucking years to get a car and you're paying for it all of the time so fuck me man this sounds so fucking crazy saying it now but how it would usually go is whenever a kid is born if it's a boy or a girl it doesn't matter but predominantly boys like no uh, no sexist uh, sort of uh, speech uh intended here but for the boys whenever whenever you get a boy in the family usually what they would do is they would open up a savings account for a car and they need to go to the car dealership i don't mm. even know if it was a dealership what the fuck it looked like but then whenever the boy, uh, the boy is born, like the grandparents and everything, put the down payment for the car together. They go and give the money at the place. Mm -hmm. And then they have installments to pay for the next 20 years. And then whenever the boy oh, is 20, God. hopefully it has a fucking car. So this is how crazy everything was back in those days. I mean, best fucking joke ever on the subject i heard it from ronald reagan well not personally but you can see him on youtube uh telling that joke so basically in russia uh this dude goes into a car dealership and he's like hey how are you guys doing i want to buy a car so the guy's like yeah yeah sure man uh what's your name so he's like vasily ivanovich mm. he puts the name down he's like have you got the money he's like yeah i got the money here's the money he's like okay i got the money good okay come back in uh 10 years <laughs> and the dude's like uh yeah okay so he heads out for the door he stops at the door and he turns around and he's like uh what time should i come in the morning or in the afternoon and the, the guy's <laughs> like what the fuck do you care bro it's in 10 years and he's like no no because i've got the plumber coming that day as well <laughs> so, that's how we had to how long we had to wait for a fucking plumber for a fucking electrician it was all like come back in 10 years yeah. so this is why in countries like bulgaria and fucking lithuania as well or all of the countries that were under the iron curtain 
We had to fucking, like, a man had to be an electrician, a fucking plumber, a builder. If you wanted to build a house, you got to do it yourself. If you wanted to do your plumbing, you better fucking do it yourself unless and you want to wait for 10 years. Where to get the materials. Oh, They're yeah. Stealing. Dude. Everybody was stealing. Everybody was stealing or yeah. everybody had, like, connections, yeah. doors, and this guy will give you the pipes for your plumbing, but yeah. you need to give him the bricks for his house yeah. and some shit like that. that. That stuff was going all around the place, like... Everybody was, we were fucking trading commodities yeah. like in the Stone Age. That was Instead, the currency. <laughs> yeah, that was the currency. You give me, I'll give you the pipes, but you give me the bricks. You know, yeah. that's how it goes. So, yeah, it was, it was a really rough time. And I don't understand how people, like, it's, I guess it's the reason for that is they never really went through it. They see the romantic side of communism where we are all living in a commune. We all are equal. We all have what we need to get by. This shit does not fucking work. And the reason, for instance, to me, why China is like a different communist model, which mm -hmm. is continuing to prosper, is that they saw the flaws of this system and they changed it that allowed private businesses yeah. and private companies companies this is why the country is thriving in terms of like growth and shit like that of so course. anyway back to my fucking coke story so as you can tell coke oh let me let me let me do another uh, sort of uh, little side note here coke comes from america this means that this meant that this is like Western propaganda, you know, mm. like anything. Like you would go to camp if you had a fucking Elvis Presley record. That's what it took. You having an Elvis Presley record meant Western influence. Yeah. And you're trying to influence people to think that the West is, is thriving yeah. whenever they were telling us that we're fucking thriving and the West is fucking suffering and it's full of fucking idiots yeah. and, 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 you know, people don't have what to eat. That was how fucking crazy this was. So, like, Elvis Presley records, jeans. Oh, my God. You had fuck a pair of blue jeans? That was considered fucking Western propaganda because it was considered the outfit of the West. Yeah. Anything that really suggested in the slightest that it came from beyond the fucking Iron Curtain was something that you could, that, that could take you to a, on a, on a one-way ticket to camp. So, yeah, this was happening. Now, the reason why I want to tell you this Coke story is that it's actually quite interesting. Now, I got these few bottles here, and uh, I think this is the most significant one. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it actually says Coca-Cola in Cyrillic. This is the first time that the Coca-Cola company allowed its trademark to be used in a different language. Right now, whenever I travel mm. all over the world, they have Coca-Cola in like probably like a hundred different languages. You know, I've seen it in Thai, Chinese, Japanese, whatever the hell. But this was the first time that the coca-cola company allowed its uh trademark and like trade sign to be used in a way like this and i don't you see it in in english here and on the back you can see that the font is actually replicated to look like coca-cola on in cyrillic on that coca-cola bottle so what actually happened you know i i, I kind of dug deep mm -hmm. i wanted to understand a little bit more about the story and how this came to be because actually we got coca-cola in the 60s which was crazy this was like the roughest times of communism so we had a very forward-thinking uh party member i mean i know that those two things don't usually go well together but he was put in charge on a, in a trading company which was handling mostly exports and imports for, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, Bulgaria is very famous for rose oil production, uh, lavender oil, and stuff like that. We're actually the biggest manufacturer in the world, even though we're such a small country. So these guys used to go to trade shows, even in the West. And because they were party members, not normal people, regular people, they were actually allowed to go beyond the Iron Curtain. So this dude 
went on a trade show in France, in Paris. Mm -hmm. And he sat down in this, uh, in this uh, cafe, ordered coffee, and saw everybody drinking some orange stuff, you know, like an orange juice. Mm -hmm. But it was fizzy. fizzy. Turned out to be a Fanta. Oh. You know, that's, that's what that's it was. It. So the guy tried it. I don't know if it was called Fanta at the time, but it was like an orange sparkly drink. He loved that thing. And then he went and asked, like, who's the manufacturer of this? And the people from the, from, the, from the bar, like the bar owner, put him on to the distributor. The distributor mm. put him on to the manufacturer. So at this trip, he ended up going to the manufacturing facility for this orange sparkly drink. And in there, he was introduced to none other than our favorite Coca-Cola. He had in it France. there. Sorry? In France. In France. Okay. He had a sip and he was like, wow, That's it. this shit is good. I love this. But... Then he thought, like, how do I bring this to Bulgaria? I mean, the challenge yeah. there is bringing a fucking Coca-Cola to Bulgaria. So the challenge was bringing the Coca-Cola product with its Western influence to a country in Bulgaria, for instance, which was under the Iron Curtain. It was not part of the Soviet Union, but it was still under the Iron Curtain. So the guy came back and spoke to our dictator slash president uh, at the time and he told him this is a magnificent drink we need to bring it and it's so good blah 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 so so actually he was allowed to continue the conversation with the french company mm -hmm. about bringing the product in bulgaria so he ended up cutting a contract where bulgaria would be the first company or the first country sorry underneath the iron curtain which would get supplied with the recipe and the manufacturing possibility to actually produce the coca-cola drink so he got an exclusive contract for all of the countries under the iron curtain wow. including russia so he went to the president and he told him about the contract mm -hmm. and he told him okay so now we can uh make this drink we can sell it everywhere and we'll get a piece of the action you know we'll get yeah. royalty so as soon as the president heard that slapped the guy behind the fucking head and told him what the fuck are you talking about us getting royalty from russia are you fucking crazy <laughs> these guys are gonna fucking shoot us on the spot if we even go and fucking suggest that yeah. they're not gonna fucking touch that with a stick and by the way in russia at the time, there were propaganda uh, articles in newspapers and shit showing um, American soldiers in Vietnam mm -hmm. rolling around, around on the ground. And they were saying, like, these guys are high on Coca-Cola. It's like no, a drink because, which they uh, drink in Vietnam and they get high. And this is, this is what the by American the time army when they were putting like. cocaine in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's <laughs> what they, they were trying to push yeah. as, a, as a story, you know? So... Anyway, we didn't end up, uh, you know, becoming the mass producer for all these countries, but Coca-Cola started getting produced in Bulgaria. Uh, we started getting very, very low amounts mm -hmm. because, again, the government was very cautious about bringing this Western influence. So in order for you to get like a, a case of like bottles of Coca-Cola, like 24 Cokes were in a case, you had to be very very well connected like yeah. you had to have a lot of connections in or i remember my granddad like doing so many favors for like different people in order to be able to buy a case of fucking coca-cola crazy so it was a ridiculous story <laughs> then uh, a few years after that coca-cola got banned because uh they were saying that the influence is too horrific on the mm. on the on the people here that they're drinking coca-cola this is changing their lives there <laughs> it's some bullshit like that but then it came out again but such a but crazy yeah like it was one of the best things that yeah. you had at the time so Dude, it was influencing you this was the best thing that we fucking had and and like thinking about it none of the other countries had it so this was our taste of capitalism and the yeah. taste of freedom yeah 
Fuck this. I mean, this probably is starting to sound like a Coca Cola advert, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but god damn it, guys. I mean, I know that you don't appreciate something that you have. I don't appreciate shit that I have here in Bulgaria. And then people come from other parts in the world and they're like, oh my god, you have this amazing mountain right next to your city. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I haven't been on it in like 15 years, you know? Yeah. But, but they appreciate it. They want to go see it. They, they, it's something that they like. And. Whenever you have something, it's it, you take it as something given, and you don't yeah. really, don't really think twice about it. But this, we appreciated Coca Cola, and let me tell you a story about the fucking cans, all right? Because we can get this, but we could never get this. Now the can was a symbol of. Uh, Western manufacturing as well. Mm. All over Russia, the only thing that came in cans was like baked beans or some <laughs> shit like that that you couldn't really open. The can was so tough. Oh, you like needed, very thin. Right? Oh my god, Not dude, thin, you like need it thick. thick. You yeah. needed to use like a commando knife and fucking stab the thing about 10 times in order to penetrate that fucking steel, man. They didn't have the technology yeah. to build something light and cool like this aluminum can. So, if you had a can, and I mean an empty fucking can like this, this meant that you are the fucking shit. Whenever I was like eight, nine years old, I got a full can of Coke from uh, our relatives in Serbia. Mm -hmm. My grandma's from Serbia, by the way. So the Serbians, they were under communism, but they had it a lot lighter than us. Actually, they had the... Uh, uh, private business was allowed in Serbia. They were allowed to travel. We weren't allowed to travel anywhere. We, we, we were hardly allowed to travel one city to the other here in Bulgaria. That's how bad it fucking was. But anyway, I got bought. Uh, by the way, I bought this, uh, I bought this uh, can from, uh, from eBay because it is exactly the can that I had. It's from the 80s. It's like, you know, the ones that you used to pull and you take the whole thing mm -hmm. out, you know, it's like a slightly thicker. So is the real version? This is the, exactly the real can that I had. It's not my can that I had back then because I'll tell you what happened to that can. But, but, but you know, it's the same can as the one I had. So, so the story was like this. I got brought a full can of Coke for me to open it and drink it. It took me like a week. Mm -hmm. I wanted to savor the moment you know i wanted to have a full coke i didn't want to have an empty coke you know like a a full coke a full can of coke is a real treasure an empty can of coke is still a fucking treasure but it's uh, it's missing some of the value so yeah. i prolonged drinking that coke for as much as my tiny little 11 year old <laughs> eight year old heart could take i opened it in a week drank it probably in like one go like and then, once it was gone, I still had to fucking brag with it. So I used to fill it up with water at, on thought. the sink. And I would go around like the neighborhood and I'd be like, Every day, hey, yeah. how are you doing? <laughs> and I like drink my water and everybody was like, wow, a can of Coke. I was like, yeah, so? And they'd be like, oh shit, man, where'd you get that? I was like, I got my, I got my sources. You know, I got, I got I, my I can, connections. I got, I can get shit. And then they were like, holy fuck, can I have a sip? Uh, nah, no, man. No, no. My mom told me not to let anybody because, you know, I might catch something. So, sorry. So, you know, about two weeks later, the paint started falling oh, off from me fuck. carrying it around all the time. So, it, it actually turned into, uh, you know, like a, an aluminum... Uh, empty can. Empty can. <laughs> so, I couldn't carry it around anymore. But, but, yeah, this is how bad shit was during communism. The biggest fucking uh, thing that you can have to brag about to people was an empty can of something that came from the West. So don't go falling for that communist bullshit and don't come telling me about how great fucking communism is and how great it can be for fucking everybody. I mean, we remember how things were here. Uh, I'm still fucking alive, 42 years old now, but like I had 10 years of communism and uh, I remember that shit. Our parents remember it. Our grandparents remember it. 
some of them were so brainwashed that they actually liked it. It was like a Stockholm syndrome, yeah. you know? You start liking your fucking kidnappers at one point because of everything that they're telling you. And they're telling you that they're taking care of you. And that the bad West is fucking yeah. people up. And that we are, but we are different. We're taking care of our people and shit like that. Fucking bullshit. So, anyway, this was the Coke story that I wanted to share with you guys. I mean... There's no morals to this story here. I mean, not every story that I'm going to be putting on this podcast is going to be, uh, you know, something that is going to give you value. But hey, maybe that one did. Gave you a different perspective, at least. I hope it did to some of you that, that were not yeah, brought up as us. For people from the U.S., yeah. it's very difficult to understand. Yeah, I just want to tell like all my American friends and uh, everybody uh, out there who hasn't lived under the Iron Curtain what it was and you know appreciate appreciate what you have now there you oh fuck me man you just got the morals of the fucking story okay so yeah appreciate what you have because not everybody has it and this is something that that has to stay with you and this is how you pull positive energy towards you by the way, last week, whenever I went to Korea, mm -hmm. I remember getting off of the plane, jumping in the taxi. And as I'm driving, you know, with the taxi towards the city, towards Seoul, we're passing on these, like a, a really sort of futuristic bridge. There's like all these islands on the sides. I can see the sea and stuff like that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, God, thank you. I'm so grateful for, for being here, for being able to come to this amazing place mm. and thank you for me actually being able to see through this window and see all these islands and and all the whole landscape that i'm seeing because there's a lot of people that can't see you know and i'm here in fucking seoul and i'm seeing all this and it looks amazing and i feel grateful for it so be grateful for what you have and appreciate everything that you have because we can get tangled in the webs of our everyday lives and forget to appreciate the little things. Yeah. And by appreciating the little things, you're going to be able to achieve a lot more and build up on what you have. So, man, that, wow. That was good. I'm, I'm listening to myself now yeah. and I'm going, right. Hey, he's right. You know, like, <laughs> damn. Anyway, so, yeah, I mean, we came yeah, up with that. We're chasing our goals, you know, bigger and bigger ones. And it's always not there's, in the present, right? As but. Jason Akative says, there's always a bigger boat. Yeah. It doesn't matter how fucking big your boat is, there's always someone that will come with a bigger boat. So appreciate the fact that you are, maybe it's not even your boat, appreciate the fact that you are on a boat whosever boat it is you know whatever boat means whatever boat means for anybody you know like so appreciate the little things and good things will come to you rub that screen now and good luck will come to you this is mag todor and uh mag ignas for good luck light three candles cover yourself in sheepskin and draw a cross with pig's blood on your forehead tonight and you will have good luck and prosperity for the next month. Well said. Namaste.